You're listening to a content production of Higher Things. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving, or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents Why Bodies Matter with hosts Erica Sorensen and Pastor Harrison Goodman. Um, at the communion rail, that's where I get to commune with my mother again. Welcome everyone to Why Bodies Matter, a podcast produced by Higher Things for youth and their adults too. The title of today's episode is Bodies Matter in Death. I am your co-host, Erica Sorensen, along with Pastor Harrison Goodman. Pastor Goodman, I would love for you to introduce our special guest today. Absolutely. So uh, Pastor Morris, the uh, the president of the Central Illinois District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, also a phenomenal pastor and uh, just can't wait to chat. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Pastor Moore, you did a breakaway this summer that happened to be my daughter's favorite. Um, and I'm going to get the title right. Ars Morandi, The Art of Dying. Is that correct? That's correct. I did it. I did it. Um, wherein you talk about, you know, how a Christian dies. And uh, in the, in this season of our podcast, we're kind of talking um, to several guests. And the framework is sort of from birth to death. Um, how does our faith and um, our faith in this body um, kind of work? And so today we're talking about death and being asleep in Jesus. So I am excited actually to talk to you on this topic because I think um, there's a lot of misunderstanding in the culture about death. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of misunderstandings. So what do you, what are the, what are the biggest ones you, I mean, you've taught confirmation, you've taught lots of youth. What are some of the kind of big things that have seeped into from the culture, uh, about, about death that are just sort of aren't helpful? Well, the, uh, some of the biggest myths that uh, are not scriptural um, are that when we die, that's it. We're just, we just disappear. Um, that kind of annihilation. Um, another one is that we just become spirits. Um, and it's, it is only our soul that is eternal and lives on. Um, and then another one is, is kind of related to that, that we become angels um, when right. we die. Um, yeah. And so since angels are spiritual beings that are always there in heaven, uh, that we get that, uh, that we become some sort of angelic being. Um, whenever I get that question in, in confirmation class, um, I always uh, uh, tell my students, well, do kittens become puppies? Um, like <laughs> people don't become angels. Uh, it's, it's a whole different kind of thing. It's a whole different type of thing. Um, yeah. Not the same at all. I mean, I think you, I think that's a thing we try, like people try to comfort one another with. I, I hear that one a lot, particularly with if a child dies or someone that was particularly sweet, like now grandma's an angel in heaven sort of watching over me, which actually scared right. the bejeebers out of me when I was a kid. The thought of my dead grandma watching me, I did not want that. That was not so, so great. And the entire concept of the resurrection is yes. one that that um, society does not understand. Uh, <laughs> recently, I was was providing a devotion for a family prior to a visitation, and I talked about Grandma rising from the dead, mm -hmm. and there was there was a, a young boy that was there, um, and I think it was great grandma for him. Mm -hmm. And um, the following day at the funeral, I noticed that he wasn't there. And I overheard his mom speaking with someone, with another relative, and said, she said, yeah, I decided to go ahead and send him to school today um, because he was really freaked out last night when Pastor was talking about Grandma rising from the dead. 
because she thought he thought she was going to turn into a zombie. <laughs> because that was the only context, context that yeah. he had for someone rising from the dead was becoming a zombie. Yeah. And that would, that would be terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. terrifying. Yeah. That would be well, terrifying. And there are there are a few sort of lives, so jobs, vocations that put you sort of face to face with death an awful lot. But for most people, it's not something we, we sort of have a lot of context for. And in a society like this, it, it's it really sort of seems like we just talk about death since nobody knows what's happening on the other side of it. Uh, and, and sort of whatever makes you feel better about the concept, you should believe that. Um, but there's no context. There's no reality. There, there's nothing to sort of jump off of. And so you're going to get a whole lot of very sort of conflicting things like you kind of talked about anywhere from angels to annihilation. And, and it's good that we have the alliteration to sort of uh, hop that jump because it's kind of spooky. Um, but if the only context you have is zombies too, and in all of it, I'm um, how is talking about death in just sort of a way that might make you feel better about the idea of it? Maybe not the most helpful thing. Well, death isn't something that's good. Um, if you keep talking about death in a way that makes you feel good, you will lose sight of the fact that death is the enemy. Death is the final enemy to be destroyed and has been destroyed in Christ's own death and his resurrection. And so, but that doesn't make death nice. That doesn't make death a friend. Death is still the enemy. And we do so many things in our society to hide death. Um, I mean, as you mentioned, Pastor Goodman, you know, there are very few uh, vocations where you regularly and routinely uh, deal with death. And, um, you know, as a pastor, I get to deal with uh, funeral directors all the time, and we have some discussions about the mortuary sciences and all of the things that funeral directors do to hide death, mm -hmm. make death invisible. Mm -hmm. There's makeup that they apply so that your skin actually looks alive. I mean, if, if you've ever been in a room with someone who has just died, it does not take very long before their skin develops a color that is very unnatural because there's that you don't have that blood flowing to those capillaries right up next to the skin. So we paint over that with makeup. Um, and there are various other cosmetic things that they do. Um, and, and it just hides death. And we need to recognize that death is the enemy and, and that there is decay that comes. But this decay has been overcome by our Lord Jesus Christ, that seed that has fallen into the ground and died and now rises, bearing even more fruit. That might actually be the better thing to talk about because you, you kind of mentioned it, but I, I think probably every single open casket funeral I've ever done as a pastor, I've heard that, that same refrain uh, by somebody at a visitation, oh, they look so good right now. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, there, there's sort of like the, the small talk aspect of, of like, do they? Because like we say that about newborns too, like, are they actually cute um, or, or do they look a little bit like an alien? Um, they look like there, Winston Churchill, all of them. Right. Um, mm -hmm. There's this sort of discomfort we have with how things are that we try and pretend them better. Um, when in reality, the thing to talk about is actually a pretty gruesome solution to it because you, you ran uh, not from they look so good right now and they're just sort of not hurting anymore to our Lord looked worse. Um, but, but there's a comfort there, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Several decades ago, there was a comedian who was talking about how we lie at funerals mm. when we walk up to the <laughs> casket and it's like, didn't mm. they look just like themselves? And he said, you know, and this was back in the era of, of tape recordings. And he said, mm. you know, maybe that's an extra feature that they could offer where you could record something. It's like, <laughs> why, hello there. How are you? Don't I look like myself? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Kind of when you go to the wax museum and they just, yes, yes. yeah, they do the recording. Yeah. And so it, it's, yeah. And, and we lie and say, oh, they, they, they look so good. They look so nice. But death is not nice. And, mm -hmm. and the, 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 the twistedness of, of our Lord's own body upon the cross as he uh, was there in death and upon the tomb. 
um, actually every uh, every Holy Week, um, I have a painting that I replace as my header on Facebook, um, mm-hmm. and uh, it is it is perhaps one of the starkest and most realistic and dead Jesus's being laid in the tomb um, mm. I have seen. And it is, it truly is unsettling. And, mm-hmm. and that is, it is good that it is unsettling because death is not natural. Mm-hmm. Right. I think we sometimes just sort of in, in recognition of that, go looking to sort of the, the wrong things of, because we're, we're sort of left behind in this. Uh, we, we either say, well, God is in control of all things and, and God let them die. So God must love death. And, and we can even go to the cross and say, well, I mean, look up there. It's, it's God must really be happy with how things are right now. Like what, what would you say to, to somebody who, who sort of approached that and, and, and where might you point them instead? Um, well, we get to point them to the resurrection hmm. then. Christ entered into death in order to deliver us from death, not because God was happy with death, but in order to deliver us from death. You know, if, if your child is flailing around in the pool and drowning, you jump into the pool to go grab them and pull mm-hmm. them out. Yeah. Yeah. God, our Heavenly Father, saw us in death and sent Christ into death to grab us and pull us out because Mm. death is not where we belong. Mm. We belong alive with God for all of eternity. And so he came to where we were in our death, in that separation in order to reunite us by his grace in Christ. You know, there's a, it comes to mind, we were talking about art, but there's a beautiful Ed Riojas print about uh, the parable where he goes and purchase, go, goes and purchases the, um, the field. And yes. have you seen this one where he, where Christ is actually in that field? And the reason he bought that field, he's pulling a coffin out of the, out yes. of the ground. Um, and the reason he bought that field is because you are the treasure in that field. Yes. Um, and he is there conquering death and he's going to someday make all things new and we will be resurrected with, with him and that promise, which is why um, I believe the title of your breakaway with summer this summer was The Art of Dying because mm-hmm. Christians now no longer have to fear death. Why? Why is that? Why do we not have to worry about that anymore? What is the art of dying? What is that about? The, the art of dying is is that that joy that we have as Christians in knowing that death has already been defeated. So while we are facing it, we can know that on the other side of death is our Savior. Mm-hmm. That it is something that is that that is there for us, and that our Lord has taken this dread enemy and this hole in the ground and changed it from that which is a destination to actually to being a portal. Um, mm. Several of our Easter hymns talk about uh, mm-hmm. death's portal um, because it is now in Christ's triumph uh, the, the, the doorway into everlasting life, which everyone on the earth, except for those who are alive on the day of our Lord's return, will know. Mm -hmm. We will all know death. And so through that portal of death, we will enter into everlasting life. And the art of dying is that art of living your life in such a way that you are prepared for death. Mm -hmm. Um, And well, I, I actually just attended a funeral this morning, and the preacher uh, was actually the son of the man who had mm-hmm. died. I mm-hmm. 
could not do that. Wow. My mother made me promise um, that I would not be the one who would be conducting her funeral. Mm-hmm. And she didn't need to convince me too terribly <laughs> yeah. much because I knew oh. I needed to be receiving at that point rather than, than giving. Mm-hmm. Um, but what pastor this morning did a tremendous job and he spoke of uh, his father's comment there towards the end, which is that, um, that he wasn't afraid of death. He just wasn't ready for it yet because he still had stuff he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so he, he just, he wanted more time and, and pastor did a tremendous uh, job of then tying that into the fact that in the resurrection, dad has as he has all the time now. Yeah. Uh, with Christ. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. being prepared, um, you know, so that you are not, uh, afraid of death, that enemy, because it is an enemy that has been defeated. Um, and so, uh, prepared for death in all that we say and in all that we do, um, and our, our life as Christians, you know, in the prayers that we say, in the hymns that we sing, um, you know, I'd made the comment in, in my breakaway, uh, that, you know, just pick any hymn out of the hymnal and odds are there's going to be a reference to death in it. And you may not notice it, you know, when you're just singing it every day, but when you have attended the funeral of a loved one, Mm -hmm. then every single one of those references just jumps out and grabs you. Yeah. Because that, that, that pain that is our grief needs to hear that soothing word of God that death is defeated. And, and the church brings that to us, not just at funerals, but each and every Sunday we hear about that death. Each and every Sunday we sing about our own death and how that has its place in Christ and how Christ's victory is our victory. And that art of dying is that, that art of learning that place and preparing every single day and you know you 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 live you you coach of mine had a great saying you know you you play like you practice Hmm. yeah and we practice our death each and every day so that when it comes it's like oh here we are i've been practicing for this my entire life right yeah well, I would say that yeah. happens that happens in church too because the law kills us and the gospel makes us alive again. We remember our baptism that we were drowned and died with Christ and we Absolutely. look forward to being raised again. We eat the medicine of immortality when we yes. go to the Lord's sacrament because we know that we, we are forgiven. Um, so it's kind of interesting because if you look for it, you can see it, it's particularly when you point it out the way that it's talked about. I have I a think, kind of go ahead. I think it needs to be pointed out though. Yeah. Um because like the yeah. language of, of defeat of death and victory of Christ, the language of 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 commun- it it does need to be pointed out because well when we we sort of say naturally where we would go to look for those who have gone ahead of us. Um, we tend to go looking for what doesn't own them anymore. We tend to sort of want to go and, and look for those who have gone on at, at a graveyard or at a thing they used to love to do um instead of going to look inside of the victor. Who, who is Christ? You, you mentioned Sunday. You mentioned the Lord's Supper. Um, what does communion do for for those who are, are left behind? Oh, it it is just such a tremendous reminder, um, and not just a reminder, but an actual carrying out of the fact that we are all united together in that great heavenly banquet in that great feast of the lamb who has overcome sin, death, and the power of the devil. Um, and in some churches, uh, they, they even uh, do this in a, a, a fantastic uh, architectural way. Um, it, is, it is especially uh, prominent in uh, Scandinavian architecture, but I've seen uh, many different uh, congregations that have also done this. Um, they have uh, either uh, what's called a, a double rail, um, 
where there are, are two communion rails that are there, one where the church militant gathers and kneels to receive the sacrament of the altar, and one that is there as a reminder of the church triumphant that is also gathered in that same moment singing the song of the angels that is in heaven because the angels lead that song. It is not only their song. Uh, the, the, the holy, 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 and the worthy is the lamb. Um, these are the songs that are sung in heaven and this great moment of triumph. There was one uh, congregation that I saw a picture of the communion rail um, on the inside of the church. It was like a semicircle uh, that went around the altar and outside of the church. It was a good old, old church because the, the churchyard was the cemetery. Yes, on the other side of the, yeah, yeah. As you went outside and you went to the opposite side of the wall, the communion rail continued around in a full circle around the altar out into the churchyard. That's Um, beautiful. And and that reminder that that even those who have gone before us, uh, who are waiting the resurrection of their bodies, um, yet their souls are continuing to sing God's praise and we are joined together with them. Um, At the communion rail, um, it is, that's where I get to commune with my mother again. Yeah, yeah. That's where I get to commune with my brother, um, who died before he was even confirmed. And I was seven, he was 11. And, and, but there at the rail, um, as we sing with, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we are reminded that there in this feast, we are all receiving. We are all singing the praise of the lamb who was slain and now lives. And, and that even death cannot separate us. And there at Holy Communion, we are united as one um, to Christ. And because we are united to Christ, we are united to all of the saints, those who are before us, those who are shoulder to shoulder with us there at the altar, and even those who are yet to come, we are a, all together. What a what a comforting picture um, of the now and not yet. That kind of that time and space goes away, and we know that we are together that way. I actually want to back up um, and ask you a, a particular question, which I think is interesting and that comes up because we've been talking about the triumph. Um, after death that is for the Christian and the promises that we have in Christ. But I know it's sometimes hard for at least the the kids that that are listening. Um, There are times where they may potentially see someone who is terribly suffering in this life. I think of my grandmother who had Alzheimer's. Um, I think of people who are terribly sick or people with infirmities of any kind. You know, we have we have people in our culture that argue, you know, for abortion, if something's wrong with your baby in utero, um, it, it's the the message that well, death is is the right answer right now instead of life. What what do, what kind of um, how do we talk about death as Christians when there is that level of suffering, particularly kind of at the end of life for some folks, or just all of life is particularly difficult or, or full of suffering? How do how do we talk about that as Christians? What we are wishing for our loved ones is not death, but relief. And the only relief that we see are those things that are a part of creation. We see the life in creation. We see death in creation. We don't normally get to perform or see miracles. You know, the, the, uh, the, the, the widow's son, um, mm-hmm. Lazarus, yeah. I mean, Lazarus, I mean, yeah. I mean, suffering. I'd love suffering. to see that. I would and love we, to see that. And, 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 and yeah. we pray for relief mm-hmm. and the only relief we can see with our eyes is death. Yeah. But the Lord gives the gift of his healing. Sometimes that healing comes in the resurrection. 
Sometimes that healing comes through the medical arts. Mm -hmm. We like to call it a science, but really medicine is an art. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. sometimes that relief only comes that we can see with our eyes through the body ceasing to function in Mm -hmm. death. That still does not make death a friend Mm. or something good. Yeah. I had um, a a member of, of my youth group. um, And a few days after his 16th birthday, um, he hit a slick spot on the road as he was traveling to school and Mm. a guardrail went through his car. Mm. and his right leg was there where the guardrail was. And um, they had airlifted him to the hospital, and eventually they decided that either he could live without that leg, or he was going to die. Wow. A 16-year-old who played basketball, baseball. Mm. I mean, he was all the sports. Mm -hmm. But it was better to have that suffering of removing the leg in order for the healing to come. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what death is. That suffering is never a good thing. But we seek that relief of suffering. And so we should always turn to our Lord who is in control of all because death is not ours to dole out, save for a few particular vocations that are acting in the stead of our Lord. Mm. Yeah. Just once. Yeah. Yeah. The executioner. Um, But we do not get to make that choice because there is glory in suffering not that we seek that's hard yes it is very hard that's hard it is very hard but there is glory in suffering our lord endured through that suffering as well and in our suffering we bear witness to and give testimony of that suffering that christ had on our behalf and that even that suffering does not separate us from God. Mm-hmm. That suffering is just, and given the magnitude of some of the suffering that I've seen, it is hard to imagine how Paul could describe it this way, but it is a light and momentary burden. Mm-hmm. Okay, pastor, I've had, I've been wheelchair bound and been riddled with arthritis for 15 years here in the nursing home. What do you mean this is a momentary burden? Mm. Yeah, but the Lord is going to bring it to an end one day in his time. And in the meantime, we recognize that these light and momentary burdens are proclaiming to us the mercy of Christ. Amen. Pastor, I can't think of a better place to end. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this day for for a podcast. Uh, Erica, you got anything else? No, just thank you so much for um, talking about how our faith relates to this particularly difficult topic and bringing um, the light of the gospel to it. Um, I, I, I thoroughly appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. You're quite welcome. Thank you for having me. Lovely.